I'm 62 years old. Hi, I'm Jill Kirkwood. I'm 58. And we are the, the 60s, 60s Chicks. Chicks. Welcome back to our channel. Woo! Yay! Linda, I just want to say very quickly, I'm so honored to be on this journey with you. Oh, yeah, it's oh my so gosh. Much fun. That's yes. a bestie. Mm. Is that not fabulous? Well, thank you. I feel the same. Oh my and gosh. we are so happy to have you here with us as we talk lady stuff. Um, but men are welcome to join us. Yep. And just, uh, you know, join the party, for yeah, goodness sake. conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. So we are here for women of any age, but we kind of gear it towards women around the same age as uh, that we are. Women born in the 1950s and 60s, but yeah. again, all, all are welcome. Women. So today I've got a question for Jill, who oh, has a background <laughs> in fitness, also beauty, of course, oh. you know, she was born Aww. like that, and nutrition. So my question to Jill yes. is, yes. what is your number one thing that you um, feel contribute or someone could do to help promote overall health? That is a fantastic question, but I believe the number one thing someone can do is manage your stress. Okay. Stress is the precursor, as we all know, to things that can go wrong in the long term with your health. It can create illness. You know, and I want to be clear, not all stress is bad. There's good stress. Stress motivates us. It gets us up on a stage and we're talking. Hey, this is stressful. It can, yeah, yeah we're trying to uh, do yeah. this is stressful. Yeah, and it can um, help you when you're up, you have to public speak. You're like, oh, I can do this. And that drives you. It's a good motivating factor too. So some stress is good. And then there are different types of stress, acute, episodic, acute, but the one that I think is most important to really tap into understanding is chronic stress. So chronic stress is a situation that's prolonged. So for instance, Linda, like divorce, someone going through a hard divorce or in an unhappy marriage, and I was there, and, um, and or in a situation where there's illness or caring for a loved one mm -hmm. who's older and their health is declining. Those are prolonged precursors to chronic stress. So I really think that those are the things we want to understand and tap into so we can manage them and they don't take control of our life in a bad way because it can lead to heart attack, depression, stroke. And we really do want to have a Rip on that. And then what's the best way to manage that? There are many ways. You know, we use yoga. I teach a lot of yoga. So there's she yoga. Does. She's an amazing mm, yoga instructor. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, exercise in itself, getting out, moving, being in nature. But I think in a quick moment, what I would do is like, so for Linda, I would have you just close your eyes. Okay, because I am eyes. stressed. <laughs> <laughs> close those eyes. Okay. And then just put your hands on your belly. Okay. And I want you to become aware of your breath. So noticing the breath, maybe we're clavicularly breathing up in the collarbones, which is normally when we're stressed. So I'm going to invite Linda to, to really take the breath uh, deep into your belly right now. Okay. So take that breath to your belly, and I want you to just take a full deep breath in. Exhale, let go. And then we could do this in various count methods and holding, but it's just get that breath into the belly and know that all is well. And another technique I really love is sit in your environment wherever you are and notice how many colors of green are there, how many colors of blue, right? You like I that? Like, I like um, that. What are the sounds you hear? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the smells you smell? So it takes you away from the chaos in the brain. So we'll get deeper on those and go into other techniques. Okay. But I think that that's good for now. Absolutely. And I love it. So I want you all to breathe. Okay. And let that oxygen flow and just chill out. Chill with chill. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my yes, God. that's another chill. Uh, hey, I'm signing up for that one. <laughs> no, Let's chill with chill. So Linda, <laughs> now it's your turn. Okay. If you now were to give advice to a woman, what is the number one thing they can do to look younger? Without a doubt, it is something so easy and so inexpensive. It is to just smile because like when you that. smile, it makes your eyes all sparkly and it uses all those muscles in your face. It also is going to be contagious and people will start to smile back. Like it's this? going to, well, no, that's okay. kind of horror. <laughs> hey, but keep trying. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it. trying to breathe. You keep trying to smile. <laughs> 
truly just going to make a difference not only in your day but in the life of everyone that you touch so that Aww. would be my number one I, piece of advice I really like that didn't you have some kind of corny saying when you were a beauty queen? yeah I did I did she was a beauty queen. I was a beauty queen I was actually Miss Burbank um, in 1977 and my little bio said Linda believes that if you smile the world smiles with you yeah so <laughs> yes it was corny but it's true <laughs> it is true it's true you can really help someone's day just you by can. smiling at them. You can. So. And that's an easy one. So Thank you, Linda. No workout or smiling and um. I'll work on my breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so this was horror. Yeah. Okay. That's enough. <laughs> but we also then had discussed about, um, just kind of as an aside, what is the oldest thing in our closets? Jill and I were talking about that the other day. and Or the most embarrassing. Yeah, or the most embarrassing. So uh, Jill, because she is does not do embarrassing. Oh, let, I do. Let, let I it do. does embarrassing. No, but Jill does embarrassing. <laughs> Jill just had a divorce and yeah. moved four times. And so, so she had, cleaned her closet. I purge. I'm and like, and so that is just full of crap. But so, I do have my oldest thing. Okay. That is a well, treasure what, to my heart. What is your oldest thing? My oldest thing that I bought this when I think I was 26. Which it's from Indonesia. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, Linda. <laughs> God, I love this lady. Um, it is a hand batik. What did we call this, Linda? Kaftan. Kaftan. I just called it like a cover. Okay. And that <laughs> works. The costume yes. is more appropriate. Yes. So it's hand batiked and it's from Indonesia. I don't know. Can... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, so anyway, yeah. I do and love this. And it is this. lovely. And, that and is, I still wear it. And I'll that take has it. a classic style. Um, yeah. I also have a degree in oh, fashion. So she she, does. I would probably just. See the arms? I dig yeah, it. I would arms. just kind of belt it with maybe some black leggings or this something. This is going to Costa Rica with uh, me and okay. uh, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Linda. All right. Because you do have embarrassing stuff. I'm I so do. Excited. Oh my gosh. What is your most embarrassing I item? Oldest and most embarrassing. Ooh, so I cover both oh. categories. Okay, so now this is like drum roll. And after <laughs> I, yes, the oldest and most embarrassing thing that I still have in my closet is my high school cheerleading uniform from 1976 <laughs> that wow. I am so embarrassed to say, well, or maybe I should just be bragging about it, that actually when I was 44 <laughs> years old and I was not married at the time and I was dating this guy and he somehow found out that I still have my cheerleading oh, uniform God. and we went away for the weekend and he actually asked if I would bring it. Which is embarrassing enough, and, but I, and creepy, yeah, and creepy, creepy. But I have to wonder how did I manage to just like ease that into some yeah, conversation with him, like lots oh, of wine. By, yeah. <laughs> by the way, I can still fit into my cheerleading uniform. I mean, yeah, that speaks lots, volumes about uh, who no, I am. So. My God, Linda, that's hysterical, and that's a scary story. <laughs> that, no one you're not with that guy. <laughs> that but is I, a scary story. I, hey, I got a million of them. <laughs> But I threw mine out. I saw that uh, cheerleading yeah, pom pom outfit. Yeah, I'm like, she's a lot gone. smarter than I am. So uh, anyway, now we ask you, what is the most embarrassing thing, or, that, the, oldest. or the oldest, that you still have in your closet? So comment below, Let us know. and also subscribe if you want to come and and join the fun and Jill's fabulous tips for uh, helping to just maintain Linda. and manage stress. You're welcome. Oh my gosh! And thank you. I just love doing this show with you. This and is I, fun, isn't she? And great? I'm looking forward to more of Linda's beauty tips and embarrassing stories. One day she'll teach us some more tricks and about I, makeup. Yes, because I, I actually do have probably something a little bit more intelligent to offer to the conversation besides yes, uh, like, cheerleading uniforms. Oh my gosh. Well, well thank you so much for joining. You. And remember our motto, it is to whine a little and laugh, laugh a lot. lot. See you Cheers. next time.